On behalf of my administrative team, Ms. Tara Scott, Mr. Andy Hinton, as well as the faculty and staff here at the middle school, it is indeed a pleasure tonight to have you here. You will be entertained by our saxophone members over here, and you they will play two selections. But I would like for you to pay close attention to the exhibit here. You will find that this is our exploratory wheel. So if you have an opportunity tonight before you leave, please stop by and just take a look at some of the things that is truly transpired here at the middle school. We're excited about the direction we're headed in, and again, we always welcome your support. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, at this time, will you please stand? We're going to play the Star Spangled Banner. That's <laughs> Thank <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Utah City School Board meeting for uh, March 17th. We're opening this meeting at 5.30 p.m. Uh, and uh, we're going to establish a quorum. We have everyone present. And if I can get uh, a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Everybody in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, do we have a, another delegation? Yes, well, we have Miss Jackson. I think y'all have another number. One more. Is that correct? Yes. Well, go ahead. Jackson for sharing your talented musicians with thank us. You. They're really a bless they're a blessing to us in the school system. Thank you. thank you guys. Thank you very much. And thank you, Miss Kinsey, for hosting the school board and uh, having us here at NMS here tonight. As many of y'all may know, back in the summer we scheduled a uh, visit to all of the school systems and we've had an opportunity to be hosted and uh, uh, allowed to visit uh, 
do you follow a primary school with uh, Principal Emily Jackson? And to the you follow elementary school with Principal Revis Gertman. And so tonight uh, we're here uh, at AMMS uh, conducting the uh, school board meeting. And I thank every one of you for attending and having interest in your school board. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, we have other delegations. We do. Did you uh, have anything you wanted to establish? Well, uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, folks, we have a lot of people here tonight. Um, and I just want to let everyone know that I expect and I truly believe that everyone will act in a civil and courteous and respectful manner. Now, if there are any interruptions, if there are any disruptions, if there are any uncivil actions, I will not tolerate it as a school board president. I'll give one warning. After that warning, if it happens again, I'll ask the officers to escort those people out of the building. With that agreed and understood, then I invite our first delegate to uh, come before the board. That's uh, George Hill. Mr. Hill. Mr. Hill, thank you very much. Um, and this is for all delegates. Uh, there's a five-minute time limit. Uh, so if you can keep your comments at or below five minutes, uh, do the best that you can. I know I'm going to be first, but... Uh, I don't know why I'm nervous. I shouldn't. I should be nervous about something I know a little bit about, in, in reference to uh, the change or for his supporting the superintendent and change at the Ufall High School for his football coach, and which is very somewhat. It's, it's, it's kind of touching because I gotten to know uh, Coach Clayton the last four years. Who, he's a good man and has a good heart, and I know he helped out a lot of young people to, to help them become productive citizens, and i like to applaud him for that. But then, a you fall a graduate, and was on the last state championship football team, which was 34 years ago, <laughs> almost. I mean, it's time, I feel like, it's not enough against him, I feel like it's time for change, new blood, and a new atmosphere, a more positive atmosphere. I'm gonna say this real quickly, just like when I ran for sheriff in Barber County, a lot of people say, oh, you won't get it because of this, that, or the other. But if I never, I mean, how can you win a race if you don't run a race and you're trying to make a difference? I tried to make a difference. I had new ideas and so forth. So right here I'm presenting myself before you today because I have a chance to make a difference in sustaining what the superintendent has laid out to support our superintendent. And, I mean, I think about when we played football here at Fall High School back in the 80s. It was nothing moving downtown. Everybody was in the stadium. Nothing. Some of y'all might remember. Nothing was moving. And now I come back. I was in Mississippi Brawl for about 10 years. I come back. I think it might have been on a Friday. I'm like, uh, do we got a game tonight? Did nobody even know? And we're playing over here. That's not what you follow football is about. I mean, it helped change me. I mean, it's not all, I mean, it's not all about the winning and losing and so forth, but you want to develop our young people, get them out to participate in sports. And we're not getting the participation that we need from our young people. Not a knock against Coach Clayton, but sometimes we just can get stale. We just need a fresh new start. And I applaud the superintendent for having enough guts to do it, because I see around people Monday morning quarterback and all that, oh, we need to do this. But they never step forward and make a stand to do anything. But today, I'm making a stand for my community, because you follow football, the state championship used to come through you follow, no doubt about it. And I see kids walking around high school my size, and they're not playing football. No, we didn't allow that back in the day. We'll take them in the back of the park. <laughs> <laughs> you coming on the field. And not only that, it's not about us as people in education. It's about these kids that we entrusted to educate. It's all about them. I got to overlook my shortcomings or whatever. This focus on the child. And when you talk about real quickly, you know, the head coach lately been the head, he's been the athletic director, which is over somewhat the funding. We need to share all of the revenue with all of the sports. I think now we might have a bass team. I mean, they didn't have when I was in, <laughs> in school. 
But the revenue needs to be shared. You know, I'm not trying to be, uh, how can I put it, I don't know the word to use, but maybe I would have been a little bit biased or towards, if I was a head coach and I had the power and I was AD, I probably would have dressed my you know, kids out as well, put more attention towards them. So we, we need to get away from that. And I keep getting back to I'm not a knock against Coach Clayton because he got a lot of my stuff up over there in that trophy case now. He helped the tradition. Tradition kept going on by remembering the former players. But this is all about change, and it's time for change in you follow City School Sports Program, especially on the high school level, which the superintendent is trying his best to do. And I would appreciate that the board and the people in this community will support him in his effort. I mean, it takes a lot for a man to stand up for the community. He ain't doing for himself. He doing for y'all kids, our kids. And I have no <coughs> agenda here. I don't have any kids that play under Kegels or anything like that. So like I said, it's not personal. This is about business. Hmm. It's about business. Thank you, Mr. Hill. I appreciate y'all time. Thank you for your views and perspective. <coughs> uh, Mr. Superintendent, yeah, well, we have Ms. Tamika Woodson. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak this afternoon. For 11 years, Coach Clayton has led our football program in the following directions. He has maintained a staff of excellent coaches who are men of good character. We posted the most 5A wins in the school history, and his teams have set records for 14 wins in one season, 21 wins in two seasons, and 34 wins over a three-period season. His teams have reached the playoffs all 11 years of his tenure. We have had the only back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons in school history, and we own the winning records versus schools of larger classifications. Now, he has produced four of the top five scoring offenses in UFALA history. He has kept our football program relevant in the state of Alabama. His teams have spent 54 weeks in the top ASW top 10. Now, his team has posted about 10 finishes in the final state rankings, with two of those being in the last four years. In 2005, we were ranked fourth. In 2006, we were ranked first. 2011 and 2012, we were ranked ninth. Now, under his leadership, 31 of his players have been offered scholarships and financial aid to the attending college. My son, Xavier Woodson, played up under Coach Clagus and his staff. He attends Arkansas State University right now. A study by Vanderbilt University revealed that Coach Clagus' teams have been in the top 9% of the nation at producing Division I ball players, And he has instilled in this community integrity, pride, and characters in our players as you follow the Tigers, <coughs> as individually young men, both on and off the field. Now, Coach Clagus lobbied this current superintendent for improvements in the athletic facility since 2012. And I find it, we in this community find it questionable that only after his firing that the superintendent began to forward, um, move forward with these improvements. Now, Coach Clagus has represented our teams, our school, and our community, and his family with great leadership and character. And I believe we've been blessed as a community to have had Coach Clagus set the direction for the football program for 11 years. It has been a direction of honor, success, and integrity for which we are thankful. And most communities would have rewarded that with a raise, not a pay cut, and not a dismissal. Now the firing of this coach is evidence to me of poor decision-making skills, short-sightedness, bad judgments, and I think the citizens of this town have no confidence in the leadership of the superintendent and the school board. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Uh, Mr. Superintendent. Yeah, Mr. Johns. All right, Ms. Johns. Ms. Nicole Johns. Hi. Hello. We, the taxpaying citizens of Eufaula, are here tonight to represent a vote of no confidence in our superintendent and school board for the following reasons. Mr. Chairman, regarding issues of public concern, there is never ending circle of non-accountability with you, the Board of Education, and the Superintendent. When questioned by concerned citizens, you, the members of the school board, have three answers. One, no answer at all. 
Two, you tell us to talk to the superintendent who responds to respective members of the community by saying he doesn't have to entertain answers to our questions. He answers to the board only. <coughs> Three, you tell us you don't question the superintendent because you don't want to undermine his agenda. When the superintendent requested substantial take-home cuts for many faculty members this past June, not one member of the board asked the superintendent a question, nor was an altered alternative approach proposed. Council has advised that these cuts were implemented in violation of Alabama Section 16-1-30. This school board has represented nothing more than a rubber stamp for the questionable actions of our current superintendent. We are told by the superintendent that we're going in a new direction, but not one board member nor the superintendent will give us the citizens what that direction may be. We entrust you with the education of our children, and you will not be accountable. It is our belief that this superintendent has been allowed to create an atmosphere of intimidation, fear, uncertainty in our schools. Ms. Jones, let me stop you. And I only have I'm, five I'm, minutes. I'm going to object to any kind of personal attacks on okay. anybody here on the board or the superintendent. So, no personal attacks. I don't think it is, but... We have had many teachers, administrators, students, and family members express concerns with the threatening leadership style of the superintendent. That's a personal attack. That's, that's not personal. A threatening attack? No, sir, it's what people told us. But it's taking up my five minutes. Can I finish? I I, I'm going to let, let you speak, okay. but I mean, he, I, as far as I know, he had not threatened or attacked anybody. That's because people are afraid. Can I finish and you'll hear? Okay. Okay. These individuals have requested their names not be used because they are afraid. They're not afraid of standing up for what's right, but they are afraid of workplace repercussions, including losing their job. Mr. Chairman, the superintendent was allowed by the school board in August of 12 to give every teacher a $500 bonus. This was financially irresponsible to us in the community feel. Some teachers now refer, uh, refer to it as blood money, but we refer to it as the bait. The following year, he indicated that the teachers had not held up their end of the bargain and would not be getting a bonus. We refer to this as the switch. He has also told administrators that socialization among staff is not healthy. Bait and switch, blood money, interfering with friendships along with referring to himself as the act factor at faculty's meetings have damaged morale and decreased the efficiency of the educational process. Mr. Chairman, we believe that the financial records would indicate a tripling of expenditures on bookkeeping services from $51,000 to the present $97,000 that does not include an approximate $40,000 for an assistant at a time when the student enrollment has decreased. Meanwhile, our sports and band programs have had their supplements cut in June of 14. Furthermore, the tops of our desks are falling off at our school while plush expensive furniture is being purchased for the central office. This seems strange for a system with a motto, it's always about the children. We believe that the superintendent has discouraged the First Amendment rights of multiple faculty members recording, uh, regarding issues of public concern. We understand that he has done this through the use of veiled threats. The courts of this land have ruled that no adverse employment decision, including uh, demotion, reduction in salary or responsibilities, or even threat of discharge, may be made of because of a teacher's expression of these rights. We believe that they have been. Mr. Chairman. We believe that our school board has allowed the superintendent to fire two coaches without due process or just cause. We believe this is a demonstrative of incompetence, non-accountability, and neglect of duty and poor leadership. Furthermore, Mr. Chairman, after investigating the forced resignments of Dan Clagus and Mike Henry, it is our belief that a member of this school board has stated to a city official that the superintendent's grounds for firing Coach Clagus was insubordination. That insubordination being the questioning of the superintendent by Coach Clagus regarding the cutting of Coach's supplements in June of 14. As the chairman of this board and an attorney, surely you understand that Mr. Clagus was well within his First Amendment right to question the superintendent on this matter. Furthermore, we have been unable to find any evidence of an action plan being implemented for the correction of the alleged insubordination. Undoubtedly, you are unaware that an action plan is indeed required. We believe that you, Mr. Superintendent, and the school board, through your perceived incompetence, have set up the hard-working, tax-paying citizens of this fine city that we love to have to pay for a defense of a retaliatory discharge suit and then to pay punitive damages. Mr. Chairman, it can be argued that we are basing our beliefs on hearsay. We have been advised by council that subpoenas could be issued and it would no longer be hearsay. We think you should contemplate whether that would be in the best interest of this school system, the leadership of this city, and taxpayers if you follow, because we can't afford the direction of the current leadership. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. John.
Mr. L. C. Green, Reverend Green. Chairman and board members and all you present. First of all, you gotta keep the clock on me. I'm preaching. Sure. <laughs> Five minutes don't mean nothing to me. I'm not here, I'm not here to talk about the coach or about anything. I'm here to talk about the system. And I'm coming as a father, a grandfather, and as a soldier. I'm coming to tell you that nobody has elected me to speak for the citizens, so I'm not going to speak for, for the citizens. I've not been appointed by anybody to speak for the citizens. I, I, I can only speak for my own personal uh, experience. I, I, I put three daughters through school, high school, college. I got a grand boy I put through school. And I'm going to say this about the superintendent. He, he has been most ex, the ex, most acceptable superintendent that I've ever come across in all my years. No other superintendent that we could call and talk to the secretary and say, I want to see the superintendent without, without giving a whole bunch of 99,000 reasons why. And, and uh, the only problem I have with talking to the superintendent, if I'm not first, you got to wait a long time, man. He'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> He'll talk, you know. And, 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 and we, we have, from my own personal experience, I, I, I didn't do it like Mr. Johns. I didn't go look and do all that other stuff. I don't know about that. That's not my concern. All I can go by is what I see and what I hear. And what I see and what I hear, we have, we have a first-class system. I'm talking about the system. I'm talking about the system. I don't, I don't think we ought to tear our system up based on one incident. I, I just think that would be a terrible, terrible mistake. Uh, uh, because I walk in my house, my kitchen dirty, I'm going to burn my whole house down. I just, I just don't think that makes good sense. But I think we got to, we got to, and I, I'm a soldier. I, I'm a retired soldier. And being a soldier, a company commander is only concerned about his company. The battalion commander is only concerned about his battalion. But the general has to be concerned about everybody in every situation. And, and I think that the general see things that we don't see. And it takes time for us to see what he sees. And, and uh, I've been a pastor for over 30 some years. A lot of times I stand in front of the congregation and I got to make some decisions. They don't all agree with my decisions that I make. But they don't see what I see. And I, I, got, I got to do what's good for everybody. I just can't please my ushers. I got to please the whole congregation. And a lot of times that causes a lot of heartache and a lot of pain. And, and I'm saying, I'm saying to the boys, and I'm saying to those of us who, we, we, we ought to, we ought to, we ought to do this when there's no crisis. We, we ought to come to the school board meeting when there's no crisis. We ought to come together when there's no crisis. And then if we do this, and, and if we communicate, then it will never be a crisis. You follow what I'm saying? And, and I, I think my father, but, but anyway, I'm, I'm saying this to us. I'm going to look at, I'm saying this to us. My own personal experience. We got, a, we got a good education system. Is there some problems? Problems everywhere. My wife said she got the problems with me, and I think I'm perfect cousin. <laughs> you know, but, 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 but she ain't gonna divorce me because one thing is wrong. So I don't think we ought to tear up our system. I, I don't think we ought to tear up our system because a decision was made that some of us don't like. And that's just me speaking for me. Thank, Thank you. you, Reverend Graham. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the next uh, item on the agenda. Okay, uh, Ms. Ms. Simpson, if you'd like to respond. I would. First thing I want to say is wow. I really like to sit down and talk to the attorney that some of these folks are consulting. And maybe I'll have that opportunity. I haven't seen some of these folks that have come forward in any of my parent meetings that I hold once a month that I've been holding for the last three years. I haven't seen any of these teachers at my teacher meetings that I hold once a month that I've been doing for the last three years. I understand. Standard answer. We're scared of the superintendent. We're scared to voice our opinion. If you're going to bring rumors and innuendos at me, bring them. You need to leave these good board members alone. They've done nothing but serve your children with no pay, unselfishly. 
and then the superintendent makes a decision on a personnel matter and I have someone in my office that just doesn't like my answers and then goes and spins that a different way because of their place in the community and I have no credibility. I'll put my 39 years up against anyone. I'll put my 23 years of coaching and what I did for kids, men and women, to build a total athletic program up against anyone. As far as some things, three years ago I got here. I'm going to tell you all the bad things that I've done. First order of business was the air condition, the high school gym. It was 2012, 21st century, and we have a high school gym that wasn't air conditioned. It's air conditioned now. Beginning in the summer of 2012, I asked the board to reinstate the allotment to our athletics and extracurricular activities. They did, without question. In 2013, the city, and they had issues, they had some stuff they were trying to get in line, not personal, and I told those city fathers I knew it wasn't personal, but they had to cut funding to the school system. So in turn, I had to make a wise financial decision and cut funding to our schools. The school system's dual enrollment was 10 years old or better with Wallace, and all your children could get was elective credit. So the bad thing that I did was I went to the board, we redid the agreement with Wallace, now your children get college credit, and also now they can get career tech dual enrollment credit. EPS had severe drainage issues. Y'all knew that before I got here. It was a swamp. It's not like that anymore, is it, Miss Jackson? Yes, sir. A new, new window for energy saving. The elementary school and primary school didn't have a gym. Didn't seem to matter. Kids played in the classroom when it was bad weather. Well, they got gyms now because this board, when I went to them, said, absolutely, let's spend the dollars. The middle school was, gym was upgraded. Safe transition at the primary school. We enclosed it totally where those little babies could, could travel safe. I don't know why it took me to think of that. One-to-one -one initiative. And I keep preaching this. Yes, I preach it's about the child. And I'll stand on that record of preaching. The one-to-one -one initiative. When your cities all around you, us, are providing better for their children, their high school children, their sports programs, their extracurricular, and we're running in place. We're just satisfied with a few sports being high level. I get the comment, well, baseball hasn't won in 34 years. Well, I probably know why. So we got a one-to-one -one initiative, 9 through 12, that's rolled out next fall for your children. Our three-year plan to create a career tech center, which is needed. Even the city officials say it's needed. Parents say thank you. The board is waiting for me to bring them a dollar figure. Three architects are looking at that facility. I don't run out and just get one. So we're looking for a career tech center hopefully open in the fall of 2016. Right, that's bad. The early learning center for our pre-K expanded from seven to hopefully Miss Warren can write her grants and we can get 10 pre-K classes. Expand the opportunities for four-year-olds. Research shows they're successful when they can get into a pre-K quality, first-class volunteer, no-cost program. And y'all were a marquee pre-K pre program before I ever stepped around here. But we're just going to take it to the next level. We're creating that early learning center. Right now, walk over there. Construction crews are around there now giving them a facelift. For children, The second year, we're going to have a kindergarten over there. I want people to come to you fall and say, what are you doing here for your children? I know that's a bad thing. New fencing at the middle school. Maybe not be a big thing to a lot of people, but the old fencing looked like last year's bird nest. Well, we got new fencing now. Give it a better look. 
three of the four schools received an extra assistant principal. A system our size, if you want to talk about size, one of my directors came to me from a school the same size as one of our schools. She was a principal, no assistant principal, a half day counselor. But that that's okay. We got three we got three administrators at every school. And you know something that's needed. I was glad to do it. Because our administrators worked their tails off. Looking at reducing the cost of students to participate in school activities. I was talking to Miss Taylor yesterday, Tuffy. I know how hard these cheerleader coaches work. It's a non-revenue sport. Lord have mercy, these girls and their parents, they don't just pay the money to become a cheerleader. There's monies after that. And they love doing it. Six fifty to seven hundred dollars to be a cheerleader. Six to six fifty to be a cheerleader. We're going to change that. I'm going to work to change that. And I told her, I said, pick your squad, but just hold on as far as charging students. We're going to see what we can come up with. Facility upgrades. Wow. Why, why'd you wait to a decision to do facility upgrades? I found out the press box doesn't have air conditioning. So why does it take me when the press box has been there, I don't know, Mr. Bailey, Jesse, 10, 12 years. I don't know how long it's been there. Beautiful stadium, but the press box doesn't have air. Why all of a sudden do I have a revelation that we need to air condition the press box? Maybe put a toilet up there to make it a first-class press box. I've talked to Mr. Hawkins. I'm a, since we're on this road, I'm looking at a new scoreboard. I'm looking at new time clocks. I'm looking at those upgrades. I'm looking at expanding the visitor dressing room. I'm looking at expanding the weight room twice its size with new equipment. Why does it take me to have that revelation? And lobbying the superintendent, well, since you're throwing stuff out there, I've had three meetings with that employee. The first meeting when I got here, I was with Mr. Hawkins. They wanted to know if we could get more coaches and could you get the allotment back and increase coaches. I got the allotment back. I told you why it had to be cut. The second meeting, briefly, would you, would you consider cutting a few sports? Now, since we're laying it all out there, it's fact. And the third meeting was to come talk to me about the supplement, which there's no property rights, reduction. That's the three meetings. No lobbying, whatever Mr. Hawkins might have been told, and he's a trusting soul, there was no lobbying of me for facilities. Well, right now, those facilities are going to start developing traction. Scoreboard, time clock, sound system, weight room, new equipment, girls locker facilities. Boy, that's, that's, that's a novelty. Let's give something to the female athletes. Let's give them opportunities. Fix the drainage at the softball and baseball field. Drainage has been existing. So, I mean, I, I guess I, I put my eyes on it, thinking, well, okay, let's fix it. I don't know why it hadn't been fixed. Expand the dugout for our softball and baseball teams. Cover, get them a covered or enclosed batting cage for softball and baseball. Our middle school, you know, I could have said, great job over there, Coach Black, Coach Leverett. I know you want to help those kids. But I tell you what, let me go and see if I can find you some money. So I find some money and I buy them some resources and equipment to have a covered batting cage for middle school softball and baseball. Unless they go share the high school stuff at some facilities, that doesn't happen. But I'm glad to do it. And some folks are very appreciative. Uh, tennis courts, redo them. Track, 2017, Mr. Bailey's got that down to redo that surface. So, to the good tax-paying citizens that embrace change, they want to see the school system continue to move forward and grow, get on board. 
Our students, all our students deserve opportunities to participate. This board has done nothing to your children. If you're coming after somebody, like it was just stated, come after me. I've withstood a lot of storms for 39 years. I have a good board, and I know, my, I know exactly where my rights stand. But that standard answer about we can't approach the superintendent, so you're going to probably have to produce some evidence of threats and bullying. Well, all I'm hearing right now is threats and bullying. I don't get bullied. I'm not a lap dog. I get off the porch and I run. So if you want to run with us, get on board for your children. That's what you need to do. Mr. President, I, I could address all these other things that were said, but I think I've stated my case. I'm excited about the future. I just am encouraging those that are excited about a new direction, which that vision will unveil itself. And I'll tell you another thing. For 39 years, I've probably been called everything in the book. A bad person, bad individual, terrible leader. But it's one thing I had never been called as ungodly. I didn't know that uh, somebody here on this earth was qualified to make that call. I thought it came from above. That's a slap in the face to my parents. That's slander. That's defamation of character. And you ought to be embarrassed and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. So with that being said, that was a little story. We're going to move forward. It's positive. We're going to conduct board business. And the board makes a decision on me. And if they don't feel like I'm leading this system, I promise you, I, I can retire. I can go buy me a truck with my own money, an F-154 door with a sunroof, and I can put things in my rearview mirror. <coughs> but I'm not ready. I still have some work to do for children and teachers in this school system. Thank you, Mr. Brother. <clears throat> Thank you, delegates, for addressing the board. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent, for your comments. We're going to now move on the agenda to approval of the minutes. Um, there's approval of the minutes for 3A, January 20th, 2015. Do I have a motion for the approval of those minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I have approval of the minutes for 3B, February 17th, 2015. I have a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We've come to the superintendent's report. Yes, sir. Uh, federal Programs Annual Report. Uh, Dr. Ramey, you want to say anything about what the board has in their packet? You have a copy of this in your packet as a PDF. This is what it's supposed to look like, but I had to send it to you electronically, so it's much prettier. You receive these each year. At the end of the actual year, you usually get the report in February. I'm a little late with this. I apologize. I wasn't aware that it occurred. This is apparently a replacement of the report card that the State Department of Ed used to send out to all systems. That was uh, cut with cutbacks. Uh, several years ago. It's pretty self-explanatory if you want to go through it. It lists um, the information as of the last school day in 2014. The uh, graduation data is from 2014 and the spring assessments of 2014. In the past you only had grades 3 through 8. I've included the high school and graduation information as well. Uh, the plan that's taken in 10th grade and the ACT that's taken in 11th grade which started last year. And I'm um, very happy to tell you that uh, all schools and the system are uh, completely clear of improvement status. We have no no's in any of our boxes, which is um, an improvement since a lot of the, great, the funding, and that's on the back is what the priorities were for 2014, was to get us out of academic danger with our English learners. And for two years in a row, you have been straight and clear. So. And, and I think, Dr. Raymond, I know our principals Mr. Hawkins and probably Miss, uh, or maybe Mr. Gertman can attest to it wasn't that way three years ago. We were in some improvements and had some issues. 
but we're not there anymore. Hard work of teachers and administrators. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Dr. Ramey. Uh, a dollar general donation in Fall Elementary is, is Mr. Gertman here. Yes, sir. Mr. Gertman, would you like to say something? I know that it's been done at your school, but would you just like, like to let everyone know what, what hits you between the eyes? <laughs> um, <clears throat> contrary to what some people believe, uh, we did not have to solicit Dollar General for any of the money that we received. They, as you know, do a literacy fund in each one of their stores. The three stores here in you fall in the Barber County area generate more money than any in their district based on this literacy fund and the money that they collect. So it's a tribute to you, the members of this community, for supporting Dollar General. <laughs> they had heard uh, whispers of people not understanding why they had to give the money, where the money was going. Rest assured that the money is going to the children here in Eufaula. Uh, my understanding is that they're on track to be able to give another donation to another school here in Eufaula at some time in the near future. I don't know when, but I would just ask you to continue to support them. I frequent all three stores regularly, so if they ask you to donate, I certainly would appreciate it. I, I think your kids would as well. So uh, anything that you can do to, to support them, not telling you not to go anywhere else, I'm just asking you that you can continue to support them in their efforts for these children. We're going to use that money uh, to enhance our library media uh, area with books and with resources for kids, and uh, we just would appreciate your support in any way that you can. I hope to recognize those. Uh, Managers and the in, in the future. Board here. Did, did you mention the amount? Oh, $40,000? Oh, I didn't know if you meant <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if you meant it. Doing four, uh, zero, 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 zero. That's what you're talking about? Uh, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, thank you, Revis, and, and Dollar General was, was very gracious, and I, I've had a request from some other media uh, specialists in our system, and board I'll be coming to you it just be something that I'll get with Miss Ellis you know I, I was ready to give them some money when funding got pulled from us uh, be, be, because of issues that happen with tax dollars and everything else uh, I want to come to you maybe I can help them here with several thousand dollars a piece at some of these libraries that uh, aren't the beneficiary of that so uh, maybe we can uh, give them some money to help them along as they go into next year so Thank you, Revis, and we'll definitely get Dollar General in here in April, hopefully. Uh, Lynn Baker, are you here, Lynn? Okay, did you want to say something about our Special Olympics, you and Lisa Johnson? I would love to. Uh, three years ago, they didn't have Special Olympics. I hadn't had it for over 20 years. Three years ago, they came out with Special Olympics. It's been amazing. Well, Lynn, thank you and thank Lisa because y'all have partnered up with Dr. Creel and you came with that idea three years ago and uh, I'm not sure what the, what happened within that 20-year span, but I have a brother and a nephew that are disabled. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's special stuff because teachers that, in all of our grade levels that work with disabled students and students that have disabilities, uh, that's that's special and uh, not not that all of our teachers aren't but even those teachers will tell you uh, those are special teachers so thank you for that we appreciate it got um, a few statements uh, is uh, Kim still in here Kim Jackson okay uh, the middle school choir sixth grade choir and concert choir made up of seventh and eighth graders and the High school choir, Mr. Hawkins, our choir director, is he, is he here tonight? Oh, I have not seen him. Oh, okay. 
uh, you know, they, they attended the state competition in Tallahassee Friday. All three choirs received superior ratings, straight ones. Uh, I don't know if Cliff is here, but the EHS Symphonic Band traveled Enterprise on Wednesday, March 11th, to perform for judges at the Alabama Band Masters Association's Music Performance Assessment. Participating bands have to prepare a march, a piece of music from the state list, and a piece, third piece of their choosing. Then they have to sight read a piece of music they have never seen before. They perform the River Choir March by Malcolm Arnold, on an American Spiritual by David Hosslinger, and vi variations on an African hymn song by Quincy Hillard. On stage, they received all excellent ratings, and in sight reading, they received a superior rating. They will perform on an American Spiritual at the Music in Our School concert this Thursday, March 19th at 7 in the high school gym. So they're definitely to be applauded for their efforts. Uh, it just shows that our, everywhere I go, I hear about cuts and systems of music and art. This board has never, since I've been here and before me, thought about doing that. They want to enhance early childhood. They want to enhance music and art and the opportunities. We're going to see if we can't lessen the impact on parents' pocketbooks when their children want to get want to participate. So uh, we're, we're, we're very proud of our arts and music. Also this Thursday, I know Mitzi wants me to mention that it's our annual uh, music and art in our schools. At 6 o'clock is the art, and 7 o'clock is the music. If you've never been, you need to come. It's real special. We've invited some dignitaries uh, from the state level, uh, a, a Alabama Public Television we've invited, so uh, we're reaching out to people. We've invited the council, the city council and others, and it's just a good time. And the gym is air conditioned if we need it. So uh, that's, uh, that's all I have right now. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next on our agenda is the financial report. Uh, Ms. Ellis? Any question for Miss Ellis on our funding? Thank you, Angie. I, I know you get heartburn every time I come to you about money, but that's because you take your job very seriously uh, and you always ask the tough questions. You take things to the board for board approval, and the board can vote it up or down. Uh, that's it on the financial report. New business. Uh, yes, sir. New business uh, 6A, child nutrition bid. Mr. Bailey? Yes, sir. Well, that bid is for our um, lunchrooms at the elementary school and the early learning center and at the uh, primary school to finish out our goal of having each lunchroom stand on their own and serve their own meals. Also, we've applied for a grant that we should know something by the end of this month that may offset those costs. Um, the revenue sources will be from our CMP program to pay for that. All, like I said, to uh, make sure the rest of our remaining lunchrooms can stand on their own. Any questions on our CNP bid for Mr. Bailey? Well, Mr. Bailey, I don't think many people realize this, but the meals were made at the high school and then shipped to all the individual schools. Is that yes, correct? And so we're saving money by making our meals now at each individual school. Besides improving safety and you know the quality of the meals. Thank you for pointing that out. And Mr. Bailey, along with cafeteria managers and Ms. Turciano, have worked awful hard. I learned that we were one of two school systems out of 135, soon to be 136, that still transported meals. I'm not sure why. I thought it would be a novel idea to maybe let our cafeteria stand on their own. And they're ahead of schedule. And those cafeteria managers have embraced that opportunity. And if I understand correct, uh, Dana, uh, meals are up. Is that correct? Come eat with your children. I know you do, but just come and pay your money and, and eat a good meal. Good, good, good food at a, at a reasonable price. Cheap price. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dana, for the job that you do with our CNP. We appreciate that. Uh, in 6B, summer school. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, on 6A. Uh, child nutrition be it. Superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. I have a motion for 6A. Second. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Susan, we need to we need to approve that financial report. We need to approve the financial report. And uh, new business six B summer school two thousand fifteen summer school. Mr. Hawkins has submitted this to me and for y'all's view. Our summer school registration is June the second through the fourth, from eight until twelve. And, and Steve, correct me if I've got anything wrong here. Uh, the first day of summer school is June eighth. And uh, it runs and through the 30th of June, is that correct? Uh, 8 to 1 are the school hours. And so the last day is June 30th. It's at Eupala High School. Uh, he's got fees listed. You can find that out from the school. I'm not sure we have missed it. We have that posted online or on your website, or have you put that? Not, not yet. Okay, you just needed it approved first. Yes. Uh, online course for summer school is June 8th through the 26th, first term, and 20. July 6th through 24th, second term, and you must complete both sessions, is that correct, online? And the hours are 8 to noon, so. No change in the cost. No change to the cost, okay. Okay. Any questions on summer school? We'll bring you the elementary school, if I'm not mistaken, in April. So, right now on 6B, 2015 summer school, superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. I have a motion for 6B. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 6C, student activities and fundraisers. You have in front of you the fall of high school activities, the Wallace talent search, the track schedule. I did go ahead with Mr. Talk and Ms. Talks and we already approved a track meet. It took place on the 12th, so there was no issues there. Uh, you see the band boosters, uh, the things that they're wanting to do. Agri-science and FFA activities, uh, their trips that they're wanting to take. You see the Adam Moore Middle School, uh, their drama with Jenny Clark, uh, their drama production, tryouts, National Junior Honor Society, their tapping ceremonies, their banquets, their work days, the AMMS cheer camp, sponsored by Miss Taylor, uh, is in Panama City Beach. Uh, sponsored by the United Cheer Association. You see the band, their March 22nd spring concert, April 11th, April 16th, 19th trip to Memphis, May 7th, 9th to Jacksonville State, elementary school, fourth grade going to Montgomery on April 6th, 7th, and 13th to visit the Capitol, the Archives Building. April 6th, two buses. April 7th, two buses. April 13th, one bus. And you follow primary, first grade, Marie Tools class, walking field trip to the Wingate home for Easter egg hunt on the 27th of March. Pre-K field trip to Montgomery <coughs> Zoo on the 17th. And pre-K walking field trip to Fendel Hall for an Easter egg hunt on March the 27th. Any questions on these student activities and fundraisers? I'd just like to point out, Mr. Superintendent, on April 20th, uh, the Great Gatsby that uh, me, me, West Faco, um, is actually paying for that trip. Uh, so that is something that uh, all employees of me, uh, management of me, we greatly appreciate that. Uh, that's uh, something that's uh, a real benefit to our school system. Absolutely. They came to our... Uh our uh, banquet, not our luncheon, not too long ago, didn't they, Mitzi? And they, they are a great partner to us over the years, and uh, we're excited about that. Uh, and thank you for pointing that out. On uh, new business 6C, student activities and fundraisers, superintendent uh, recommends approval as stated in the agenda. I have a motion on 6C. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 6D. Personnel, 6D1, resignation of personnel, you see in your agenda packet. <coughs> Any questions? Any questions? On 6D1, superintendent recommends approval of 6D1, resignation of personnel, as stated in the agenda. Do I have a motion as to 6D1? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 
6D2, transfer of personnel. You see that uh, in your agenda? Any questions? 6D2, the transfer of personnel. Superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. 6D3, termination of personnel. You have in your agenda? Any questions on 6D3? 6D3, superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. I have a motion to 6D3. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That's all I have, Mr. President. All right, at this time, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Fair. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm.